personnage en réalité une autre origine. Whenever asked where are you from, I always get confused. Because it comes back to my mind in another question, where is my home anyways? Is it home as in the place of birth? The place where I spent my childhood? Is it my nationality? Or my parents' original countries? Usually, my answer depends on the context of the conversation or person I'm talking to, because for me, home is not here or there. It's about finding home. Today, I am privileged to address you all. I am quite nervous to speak to such an important body. But as I accept this privilege, I would like to remember my ancestors, my parents, and all others whose migration experiences I tied with mine. My task here today is not only to share my story, but also to give a voice to the children of migrants who are desperately in need of help. My life has been a continuous process of emigration and immigration. I have a Japanese father who met my Filipino mother while doing research work in the Philippines. Except for my eldest brother who was born in the Philippines, the three other children in my family were born and grew up in different cities in Japan. My nationality is Japanese and I lost my Filipino nationality upon reaching the age of 20. As a child, until I became an adult, I went to nine schools in Japan, in the Philippines, and in the United States. Presently, I live and work in Japan. There is a common belief that it is a monocultural country. That is not true. It is multi-ethnic and multilingual historically. Japan has a variety of people in terms of culture and ethnicity, more than what the majority of people in the country have been taught or have thought. We have the indigenous peoples of Ainu in Hokkaido, for instance. We have the Okinawans, the old-timers, or the so-called Zainichi people from Korea and China. And during the last few decades, Japan has received so many newcomers, mainly from neighboring Asian and Latin American countries. I grew up in Osaka, Western Japan, where a huge community of ethnic Koreans and their descendants live, now reaching the fourth generation. When I was a child, I had a difficulty speaking about myself to others, especially about my Filipino-ness. I was a shy girl, so I didn't want to stand up or be given special attention. Thus, sharing my Japanese similarity with other children became a coping skill where I'm, I wanted to get along with my peers. Still, it was hard for me to admit the fact that my mother is from a foreign land because her looks and ways of speaking were completely different from other Japanese mothers. But whether I like it or not, my family is unlike other typical Japanese families. At the same time, although Japan is my home base in my, and my first tongue is Japanese language, I couldn't be 100% sure about really being a Japanese. I have a Japanese citizenship. I still feel some kind of strangeness in my daily life. In Japan, remarks or jokes about foreigners are very common, and many of these are insulting. I've heard stories about the challenges that my mother has been facing. 
l'histoire des Philippines au Japon. Que ma mère a rencontré en tant que ressortissante des Philippines. I came to realize that the stereotype images of the Philippines would be that of street children and scavengers in garbage mountains. Also, there is an image of the Filipina in Japan as an entertainer. Those images that I've heard and seen were often negative or prejudiced, which gave me a lot of pain because the Philippines was never a foreign land for me. As I had many happy experiences when I visited our relatives and friends, so beautiful beaches and met warm people. Thus, there was always a conflict within myself of being half Japanese and half Filipino. Given the stereotype image of the Filipinos and the Philippines in Japan, it was quite difficult to have a positive appreciation of my bicultural background. So, what makes my situation more complicated is that I spent a few years in the United States where I was educated in a multicultural context. Learning different cultures and values was interesting in a way, but sometimes I had to face the dark side of the history of migrants, which was full of stigma and discrimination. I try my best to be adaptive to different cultures and to become more open to diversity. I was given many opportunities, but still I had a hard time and I become more introverted. My growing up period was spent with the feeling that I was caught in between cultures and societies and I was completely lost in the middle of, the, of finding the way to home. So I decided to go back alone first to Japan and to the Philippines during my high school years. It was the first time that I was exposed to two cultures without my family. I became more comfortable going back and forth between two cultures, appreciating similarities, difficulties, the differences, the negative and positive sides of these two cultures. That's when I finally realized the importance of trust and love for people around me. Family, friends, teachers, classmates, and people I met at each life stage were the best of what I got in life. They fulfilled my life by sharing happiness and sadness at times. This idea is more transcultural, no matter who you are or where you are from. As I discovered myself during my university years, I realized that locating home is not so much a big deal anymore. Instead of searching where is my home and who am I, I started something. I started to do something for others, try to think about what makes them happy and how I could help them. That kind of realization gave a purpose for myself and gave, gave me comfort in everyday life. Thus, working for others became my purpose in life, and my interest was shifted to how to make use of my multicultural background and experiences. I majored in international studies in university to study about history, politics, and sociology of Asian countries. I visited several places around Asia, Africa, and Europe where I immersed myself in the more diverse ways of living, beliefs, and varieties of communication. I've been involved in volunteer work in Japan and the Philippines for multicultural youth. We plan and coordinate family-oriented programs while interacting and learning about each other and our cultures. 
I enjoy working with them, sharing experiences and ideas which eventually build a sense of fellowship with deep empathy and trust with each other. A lot of migrant families and children that I met need support. Many have complicated personal lives, coming from broken families, having a single parent, and or face problems financially and socially. Just like other migrants, migrants in Japan are vulnerable in many ways. They are migrants in the first place, so they lack a support system and acceptance in the communities where they live and within the majority society. Many parents are working under severe conditions and raising children at the same time in a foreign land. <coughs> children of migrants have different issues, miscommunication with parents, conflict with peers, misconduct, bullying, and discrimination in schools. Some suffer from psychological and mental issues. I went to graduate school to specialize in clinical psychology and counseling, and I work with migrants, their families, and especially their children. Whenever I meet clients or stakeholders, I try my best to listen to their stories. Each of them has a unique life history that are challenging and oftentimes overwhelming. But I carefully look into their stories and try to catch the light of hope. I learn a lot from the difficulties and strengths they have. I make use of my experiences and emotions as a minority and to understand their hardships. My dream is to encourage and empower young people with a multicultural background in Japan who face difficulties about themselves and their situations. It's my duty and responsibility to let their unheard voices be heard in a country where migration is seen as a problem. So I think many of you who are here were children of migrants and or you are parents of multicultural children. Despite the complicated history that forms our migrant experiences, each one of us is here now. This is the most essential thing to remember when one feels lost or left in the middle of nowhere. No one should deny our presence and backgrounds. Our multicultural backgrounds could be used in positive ways to understand and overcome many obstacles to create a peaceful world. Thank you for listening to our voices.